a dream. It, I mean, I, surreal is really the only word I can use for it. But, but you know, for as long as I can remember, the you know two. I, Jaime Reyes is, is the biggest Latino superhero in, in the DC universe. So growing up, my mom was a huge fan of, of comics, and I think she kind of passed down that that liking to me. And and uh, it, it it was always a dream to to play this role and and to get into this character. I think the most exciting thing about Jaime and, and Blue Beetle is, and we'll kind of get into this later, but the family aspect. You know, I, I really think a superhero movie hasn't really tackled that yet you know you you see these superheroes and they're like perfect by themselves they're like the perfect human beings they're like oh my gosh he's he's buff he can't do anything wrong he always knows what to do and i think you know a lot of the charm of jaime is that you know he doesn't necessarily always know what to do and, and you know very similar to myself you know there's sometimes you're you're going through life and making decisions and not the the surety of it all and the the knowing if what you're doing is the right thing isn't always there but the support system that jaime has because of his family friends yada 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 is I think really what makes Jaime him and, and and I relate to that so much. My family is so integral in in my comeuppance in my in my growing up and, and everything that it they feel a little inseparable at the time and, and uh, or, or at some times and, and Jaime definitely feels that way as well. The family aspect is one that this movie really hits right on the head and and you know sometimes getting to work a along phenomenal actors that are playing my family you know Elpidia, Damian, Adriana, uh, Belisa, all the whole f core family I look at them and I and I speak with them and I'm like whoa it, it you know from the get-go it felt like we were we were bonded for life and and we are now uh, but but that is is so I I haven't seen that in a superhero movie before so so I think the audience is really going to relate to this that. family really for better or for worse is the driving force of of everything that Jaime does and, and I think you see you see that and, and it's really just uh, due in part to how much he cares about about them you know and 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 that is an experience that I that I you know relate to and that I can connect with so easily because I, I my family is also so integral in, in everything that I do and sometimes you know it, it feels like we're on top of each other all the time but that's those are the best types of relationships and I think they really provided a support system for Jaime to to help him you know excel in in everything that he wanted to do and maybe now that he has the scarab the plans are a little bit different but they're ride or dies. They're, you know, they, they see him for who he is and they're going to support him. And, and that really is so, such a, a important part of the story. The character of, of Blue Beetle is the story of someone who has been presented with this opportunity. And maybe while he's resistant at first, you know, there's sometimes where you've been granted opportunities or you've been put into a position that maybe you feel like you weren't ready for. And how you navigate that, I think, is, you know, the story that this will tell. Blue Beetle is about this Mexican-American kid called Jaime Reyes, who just got back from college. And he found his family in a really delicate situation, especially financially. So he's now looking for a job. That's when he meets Jenny, Jenny Court. Jenny, I, I guess she didn't, she didn't help him because <laughs> she got him in a even more delicate situation. But f from where I see, he should be grateful. Okay, so because she's the responsible for <laughs> turning him into Blue Beetle. <laughs> but it's about, it's the story about Jaime and his family and the Scarab and how he got chosen by the Scarab to be the next Blue Beetle. It's undeniable how family is... I feel like it's just the essence of the movie. It's really, it's really important. It's really important for Jaime, it's really important for Jenny, and it's, I've, I, I don't think I've ever seen a superhero movie where family is just so it's always the family of the superheroes it's always present somehow and they're they're 
in, in, in everything, in his decisions, in, in his... They, they even help him sometimes. The suit, the suit's beautiful. It's really close to the suit um, from the comic books, so that's really nice. And it looks incredible. It's, it's beautiful. I love it that it's not only CGI, that we can see it in person, and which helps a lot. <laughs> Jenny is a very confident young woman, but she's also quite lonely. She lost her mom at a very young age. Her father, Ted Cord, disappeared when she was young. So she grew up kind of like all over. She has this need and this, this desire to just belong to something again, to, to, to have her family, to, to feel like she's part of something bigger than her. The gadgets are just over the top cool and, and freaking amazing. Everything looks so good. I, I love everything that, that Jenny gets to wear and, 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 and do with all the, the crazy Ted Cord's creations. <laughs> Everything is just um, like even even a, a simple GPS. Like I, I was talking to Anhill on, on, on the other day, and we were like, "There's no way they could do like uh, more complicated but funny but weird GPS. That that's it. That's something about all the gadgets." And yeah, it's gonna, I think it's super cool and I've, I've never seen anything like it. Working with Anhill is just so nice. It's, it's like a dream, it, it really is. I think I tell him almost every day that I, I love him. I think about like my first day here, I was super nervous and he was just so nice. It felt like I was at home. That's how I feel around him. I feel very safe, I trust him and I love how he allows me to create with him. Oh, Victoria. Poor Victoria Cord. Well, she's really smart. She really cares. Um, she was in a situation where she built this company, and then at the end of the day, the dad gives it to the guy, the son, the, instead of her, who then basically ruins everything that she has built. She gets absolutely no credit for all the work that she's done. And he then manages to wreck the business and leave her holding the damage and trying to save uh, the day. So I think that she goes maybe from a well-intentioned point of view in the beginning to being <laughs> quite ruthless, which is really fun, and uh, and without a conscience, because I think whatever she felt about justice in her own personal case uh, was not fair, was not just. It's always so much more fun playing a villain. I mean, seriously, you can say and do things you would never have the courage to <laughs> say. And, and usually they're the most authentic, I have to say. They're, they're convinced of their mission. They're, they're not uh, compromising in any way. They're, they're not uh, burdened by a vision that involves mor morality or anything. So uh, it's so much fun to play a bad guy. What I loved about this script and, and the experience of it is that it's, it's people-driven. You know, in the end, the superpower is love and the family. And his whole journey of not wanting to accept responsibility is such an interesting one. I have two boys and, you know, going out into the world, which is primarily created for men with an expectation that they rule the world. And then they come up against the reality of what they need to survive in that world as they start to get older and it's not handed to them and getting to the point where they take, uh, they take the challenge and, and, and accept their power and understand that nothing's going to come from the top, that they have to be their own hero. Um, I think that's kind of the journey that he goes through. The family is so much fun, but also is uh, so sweet in their bond and in their priorities. And I think that these days we need that. You know, we need to see families that fight together for their survival in a real way and 
who um, can clown around and be rough with each other and be funny and sisters and brothers who who tease each other and, and you know <laughs> and but at the end of the day um, are there for each other to the death you know and uh, um, I think that's that's one of the best things about the film I just love on hell and I love the people that he assembled and I love that um, again there was so many Spanish you know the the, the in the crew too not just the actors but the the crew the costume designer and you know so many of the people on set so we had such a nice hybrid of cultures that was going on and he was so passionate and at the same time so playful and you don't find that combination that often. I think what's so amazing is that in this film you see that ancient power transform this young man who is Jaime, who is obviously so bright and bushy-tailed about life and getting his family, you know, basically like what all of us living the American dream, right, is like to to get our family palante, to, to, to get to the next level, whatever that is. Um, and so the, the, the dynamic between Kajida choosing him to be Blue Beetle um, is just so, it's just so amazing. It's really cool. So I think there's a lot of references to what technology is today with Kajida. Um, at first it, it starts off kind of, well, soulless. She's, she's just an a, almost like an AI um, Siri type voice. Uh, but as she starts to kind of become one with Jaime, she's She's taking information. What the heck is happening is Jaime's thought, you know? And I think a little bit for, for, for Kajida, it's like this, uh, let me show you what I can do. Oh, actually, let me show you what you can do. And it's terrifying and it's thrilling, um, but it's also really funny because she thinks she's doing a good job. And he thinks that it's like the, it's the worst thing, you know? I, we split a bus in half and she's like, and we executed great, you know? We did it. And he's like, no. And so there's kind of like this dance around the fire. So I think what's so amazing about the scarab, right, is it's, it's this ancient thing that's been around for so long, but has actually been unused for so long as well, right? There's like this mythology around what its, its capabilities are. And so when you see it come to life, you're like, wow, this thing can really make anything happen. And there's a moment where she says, anything you can imagine. You yeah. know, we all come from something. We all have had to turn our greatest pain into our greatest power. And it's what we use that power for, right? And so I think it's that moment that Kajida really shows Jaime. He also loved his family. My hope for people who go to watch this film is that they leave inspired that they leave feeling seen, um, that they leave feeling part of something bigger than them. I think you see how big community is in this film. And when I say community, I, I specifically mean family and how for us, especially in, in, in Latino culture, it's like our neighbors are our family. You know, uh, my, my, my brothers, my cousins, my sister, my, my tias, my tios, like we are this one greater being, kind of like how Jaime and Kajida are one greater being. It's so easy to quit on things once they get to be hard. And you may have time go by and then you might see somebody that is doing something that you wanted to do. And then the only difference is that they did it and you decided not to do it. And um, uh, with a lot of uh, with a lot of people who come from families where they aren't necessarily the most encouraging to to each other, that animal would mean that there's some things you have to do for yourself. There's some fights you have to fight for yourself, and there's some times you have to speak up for yourself. And um, we're so uh, uh, used to having other people stand up for us. Animo is when no one else is around and it's time for you to speak up for yourself. You know, the family as heroes, uh, he mentioned that to me in the beginning, uh, our first conversation. He said, you know, in most movies you see that, you know, the, the corporate industry wins or the company wins. Uh, uh, but in this movie, the family is going to be the heroes. The family is going to save the day. And I thought, well, how's he going to do that? You know, uh, and, um, it's brilliant the way that it's done because this family unifies to to be heroes. I think as a as a world feature um, that this 
will hit people like no other. And the fact that I think it's going to be a really good movie as well. So it's going to speak, uh, you know, we speak Spanish, there's some Portuguese in it, there's a lot of English in it, but there's some great music in it. And it's really going to be really funny and exciting and theatrical and explosive and all the things that make these movies um, uh, uh, great movies and movies that stand the test of time. This movie is going to be explosive and dynamic and theatrical and above and beyond exciting with a, a bit of a different tint and a tint that the world's been waiting to see. We're so quick to judge somebody by the way they look and uh, Rudy's a bit of a contradiction of the way that he looks. You know, he's very intelligent, uh, but he looks like he, you know, he looks like he uh, doesn't care what time it is, but he does. And, you know, he lives with his mom, he sleeps in the living room. It, it, it's all the things that, uh, uh, that, that I've seen with my own eyes with uh, brothers of friends that I have. I think it's, it's an homage to all of the brothers. I think it shows Jaime because I think in all um, that he's a good guy, you know, a young guy, and understanding where he is in the position of the family. I think, you know, going to college and coming back and not really having a lot of options and having a family that um, is uh, maybe, you know, low income, struggling, um, they struggle. Like a lot of families struggle that I think the Scarab would choose somebody who would use the ability for good. The way that he adjusted all of us to be together um, with not even working on the script first, but just um, being around each other w was was um, was a uh, was a brilliant move for us to get used to being um, with each other, you know. And um, there's nothing that can take the place of chemistry within a group of people. And that was more important to him than w was whether we knew the words or not. So um, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, he's a very special, he's a very special uh, guy, you know, very special guy and has been from the moment that we we spoke. You've seen nothing until you've seen the Blue Beetle uh, costume deploy and you've seen the pinchers detract and you've seen him fly and then you've seen him uh, fight and it, it and he does it in a dark blue and black kind of charcoal which is maybe the coolest colors of all but it's more of a skin than it is uh, an actual costume I would say that uh, just by looking at it it looks like it would be a great place to be with an undercurrent of of corruption and undercurrent of of evil but on the on the uh exterior um the look of uh, paradise but then behind the scenes where the evil lurks that there would be people who who are uh who are meant to do it harm blue beetle is about a regular boy in a regular life with a regular, so lovely, an amazing family who became to superhero. Uh, it's the perfect uh, opportunity to, for the fans and the audience to feel in like this superhero, to, to be, to, be uh, to, uh, to think, oh my God, maybe this can happen to me. This is amazing, the movie. I passed a fantastic time making this movie, you know, because uh, they give me the opportunity to, to make these kind of characters to, uh, uh, who have um, many fun moments, you know, and many these kind of comedy moments that I love it because uh, mainly in my work, uh, in my work as an actress, uh, I, I made a lot of the tragedy and I love it too. But to have the opportunity to, to make comedy, oh my God, it's a present for me. Nana is really fun. It's really fun, but when she change this, this uh, chip in her mind, she's a superhero too. <laughs> this is the essence. You need to open your heart because everybody wants justice and it's not easy because all the time the people have a lot of bad things around the people. But if you can open your heart, your eyes 
and your arms, you really transform your life in a very good sense. I think, uh, for me, one of the most um, value in this story, in this superhero story, uh, is this, this kind of fun you have. Because it's not only dark, it's not only um, um, action, uh, dark action, it's it's you you can you can laugh a lot and you can enjoy the the action and you can obviously you can have the the opportunity to to open your your heart and cry with us i think that the people will be happy will have a fantastic fun 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 moments i think the audience will laughing a lot the audience will uh, will have the opportunity to be uh, excited about the action, and the audience will have the opportunity to thinking about how important is your family, how important is your beloved beloved ones, how important is to take care of the family because the family give you the um, the uh, necessary values to live a beautiful life but we don't have to forget it's a superhero movies you will have a lot of things a lot of things and a lot of beautiful opportunity to have a lot of emotions in blue beetle i think seeing the women you know like the grandmother and the mother and, and, and the daughter, you know, like that we take hands in the matter, you know, that we don't sit down and cry and do nothing. We are not the victims. We do not behave like the victims. And that is just like, what else can you ask for a movie uh, of this kind of, you know, of superhero movie? Where usually is the, the, the goods and the bads, and that's it. Good and bad, good and bad. But here, it has a lot of values, you know? And we take, we, we help each other. It's just like comedy in our everyday life, you know? If we, if we really look at it that way, you know, it's comedy everywhere, you know? But, um, so in this movie, we go, we go from all those levels. Action, comedy, drama, you know? There's a lot of sadness, you know? But we come out of it. And, and that, that's, that's so beautiful, you know? It's not about like, just explosions, you know, action like that kind, you know? It's not about that. Of course, there has to be some versions and things like that, yes. <laughs> There's a lot of action, yes. <laughs> but, but there is a lot of other things that, that, it, the, the, that the story is just so complete. It's beautiful. Milagro is hilarious. I love Milagro. Um, she's very independent. Um, she's outspoken, she's blunt, you know, she's just extremely honest to the point where people probably are like, she is so rude. Um, but she just tells it like it is. You know, she doesn't like to beat around the bush. She's a realist, you know, versus Jaime, who's kind of like optimistic and, you know, very hopeful. And Milagro's always been like, dude, come on, bro, like that's not gonna happen, you know? Um, which I've always loved about their relationship, but, Milagro's an artist. She's very, very passionate about her artwork, her community, how those two come together. Um, and she's always felt that that's, you know, that was her purpose, or that is her purpose, is to be an artist and to bring that to the community. With Jaime, she relates because they are first generation kids. Um, and so that's always a very specific experience. So they kind of get to share that together, which is very nice. Um, and I mean, I, I, of course they always had like their sibling tiffs or whatever, um, but I think for Milagro Jaime has always been like a really positive figure in her life. And I think they relate to their love for their community and their family. I think um, how important family is, I think they both are very connected on that. I think visual style, especially like with the bug layer and the bug ship, I find it to be very retro, um, kind of like that old style 80s um, neon lighting and all of that. 
And even, I mean, even the gadgets, you know, Ted Cord's layer has been lost in time for a long time. And so it's a time capsule when we go back into the layer and the bug ship. It hasn't been used in like 15 years, something like that. So it, it, it everything takes you back. And I love that about it. It feels very nostalgic. The family is super close knit. I mean, I think there are no secrets within that family, <laughs> just impossible. Um, very supportive in other ways. I know th the art is a big one that they go against, but I think the, the mom is the only one. I think everyone else in the family is very much like, Milagro is just Milagro and we love her for it. You know, we're not trying to change her. Um, but the family, they do everything together. Um, and sometimes that can be very frustrating. <laughs> um, but yeah, they're, they're super close knit and they have, they've been through a lot together. There's definitely some strong, strong bonds there. It's got so much comedy in there, which is so nice, but it really has, there's heart to the story also. Um, there's the family aspect. There's the meeting of these two people from totally different worlds and um, these two families that are just so opposite. And you see how, you see the differences, the similarities, you see this town. I mean, it just, the story touches on so many things and it brings so many things into perspective, all while keeping it light, keeping it fun, keeping it action packed, um, visually pleasing. I mean, there's just so much in it. I think the essence of Blue Beetle is <laughs> bravery. I think that's, um, you know, all the characters have their moments of bravery in the movie. And I think that's a lot of what Animo is too, you know, and that's our catchphrase, all of the movie. That's what we tell each other um, because that's what it means, you know, be brave, be strong, and like, don't go in with fear. It's the idea that spirit also carries us and informs us on our journey as well. And so it's not just those that we love that are around us and support us, but it's also those that are no longer with us that still carry on being part of our lives and informing us about who we really are. They're gonna see a whole flavor of familia and what that looks like, you know, and to see it on a big screen and the jokes that come in, you know, with George Lopez, who's a, an icon and a legend, you know, in, in this world. It's, it's for him to crack his jokes. It's becoming a very funny, funny film. I mean, there's, there's just so much playfulness and humor that's coming out. So I think fans are gonna just be blown away by just seeing something that has ever been seen in the DC universe. And that's gonna be huge right there alone. That's what I've always loved about the DC universe um, is that it really does get deep into whatever, you know, story it is. You know, like the Superman, it's super dark. Uh, Blue Beetle? I mean, it's the Blue Beetle, first of all. It's not going to be super dark. It's going to be way more playful, way more fun, way more effervescent, just like the suit is. So, yeah, there's, there's just it's a whole fun, uh, light quality, but yet overshadowed by this sort of darkness, but not super dark in the way that's, you know, but it's still real. I mean, you know, you still get that feeling of manipulation and uh, exploitation that, you know, but it's, it's just, it's not so... Um, it's not so, you know, pounding into you. It's not pounding into you like that. It's so yeah. It's it's it's, it's going to be really fun to see. Ultimately, I love the family. I wish I was part of the family, <laughs> honestly. Uh, but it just shows the value of um, what it means to to put value on something, something that's tangible or something that's uh, emotional. And sometimes we forget the important things in life uh, are love and family and not necessarily wealth and accolade and materialistic things. And I think that Blue Beetle uh, is struggling with that where he wants a better life for himself, uh, but he also has a wonderful life already that he comes from. So it's a, a great juxtaposition of a superhero and what lives in all of us as people, as humans. Uh, it's that struggle that we go through every day. He represents all of us. I think the essence of this movie, the message at the end of the day, is that you're your own hero. In whatever state of life you are in, if you have unfortunate circumstances, if you come from um, humble beginnings, if you come from wealth, you are your own hero. You can choose the assets in front of you to do good, to make good, and to pass that goodness 
across, uh, or you make the choice to use anything at your disposal to make the right or wrong choice. So it's up to you to be a hero or the villain in your own story. I think the kind of action that you can expect and the kind of action that we got the chance to see just from filming is just top notch, high adrenaline, high octane, like just, it, it, it just has a crackle to it. You know, just the movement and the cars just smashing into it and the, the sparks in the lab and things exploding. It just gets your heart race going and your heart pumping. Um, so it's really exciting. And I'm really excited to, to see it because I haven't seen it yet. You know, I think Blue Beetle can stand shoulder to shoulder with other superheroes because he is at that level. You know, he has the formula that makes a superhero. Um, leads with heart, has the best intentions, is a badass. You know, can I say badass? <laughs> it, it, it just has all what you need in a superhero, what we want. You know, it's aspirational um, hero, uh, aspirational hero dreaming, if you will. It's what you want your heroes to be. Jaime is more than just a relatable character. I think Jaime speaks for a lot of the the situations that we face uh, in real life. He's a kid that um, believed in an idea of progress and is playing by the rules and he's staying on his lane. Uh, his family came before he did and they did all the hard work and all of it has been headed for him to become this promise of progress and and, 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 and in the pursuit of the American dream. And once he follows the rules and comes back, he realizes that a lot of those things are not like they said it would be. Uh, that life often brings surprises and to people like him, it's not as easy as go to college, come back and make a career. And as he faces that reality, uh, of having to deal with existentialism within his family and within himself and navigating life of a college graduate. The relationship between Jaime and the Scarab is interesting because it's not necessarily his conscience, but he can hear him in his head. He can have this conversation that if you were to see him as a third party, it looks like Jaime is talking to the air like a crazy person, but he's actually having a conversation with the voice in his head, who is the Scarab. And at first, the Scarab's mission is kill, kill, kill. And Jaime is not that type of kid. So when every time the Scarab wants to do something uh, of his nature, uh, Jaime's uh, reaction and, and, and his good heartedness steps in the way of the Scarab's mission and creates this banter between them that sometimes is funny, but at the same time is enlightening because as the story progresses and, and uncertain, uncertain events happen in Jaime's life, uh, the Scarab also learns from Jaime and the Scarab starts to become more and more compassionate eventually being a voice of reason to Jaime towards the end, as opposed to the way it started, where Jaime was the voice of reason to the Scarab. One of those things that's very special too, is how to capture the warmth of the family, since on this origin story, uh, the family, contrary to other superhero movies where the hero keeps a secret from everybody around him, the secret really happens in front of the family. So. Gary and I always said, like, good luck trying to hide a secret from your mom in a Latino household. They always know. And we kind of like embrace that. So this made it for a very unique journey where the family is part of the adventure, not somebody, not, not a group of people or, or an object of rescue, but on the contrary, a, an integral part of the construct of this superhero. Yeah, the other movies that I've done, it has very much been uh, in somebody's basement or somebody's studio. Um, but this is the first time like seeing what we've been working on for months and tinkering uh, to a point of satisfaction and then seeing it all play with, what is it like 50? Yeah, I think we've got 50, 55 today. 55. Yeah. Uh, not including brass. Not including brass. <laughs> 
which is uh, overwhelming, but it's it's really <laughs> nice to see. I've yeah. only seen it on like making off of videos. Yeah, but, same. But being part of something like this is just like, oh wait, when I thought I was being surprised enough with the whole process, this is like another level. Yeah, it's like an it's a whole extra dimension that mm -hmm. you know and from yeah from us sitting in my studio and listening to the demos and you know you get the demos to a point where you're like oh this sounds huge and then you hear it here and it's like well yeah we'll just delete the demo yeah <laughs> yeah definitely it's like times 10 uh you know and it's just it's really really uh humbling and amazing just to see these musicians take things you know that have come from my studio in my house and you know that we've been looking at on this little screen to all these guys just opening the page and playing it is such a beautiful experience yeah i mean i mean there's a lot of stuff you know th there's very kind of, you know some of it's kind of almost like tech techno you know like there's a little like pull pulling from like a lot of like modern kind of you know dance music and electronic music kind of production techniques and then you know there's very traditional orchestra stuff on top but with the even with where we're going quite traditional with the orchestra i try and throw something in you know to detune everything or to have it in different registers that you don't normally get these kind of scores and you know then there's the this whole kind of like you know like kind of vapor wave s kind of like you know big glassy synths and you know there's a ton of modular synths and custom things that i've made and then on top of that like you've got these kind of chugging like seven string guitars and it's almost like new metal-esque like mm. you know when you when you strip it back like some of it it's like you know we talked about like you know demon jimmy page yeah and, like, you know like channeling, <laughs> channeling, channeling your jimmy page <laughs> energy yeah uh, and for you to, to listen to like what was the most exciting playback that we had um <clears throat> I mean, there's like every every moment has its own thing, yeah. I guess, in the movie. Um, there's like micro themes. <clears throat> there's micro themes throughout. I think like ultimately th there's like the one that we started off. Like I think it was like the first one we started off and like really understanding what we're going for uh, was on the cosmic realm yeah. energy. You know, how yeah. can we how can we make it unique, but at the same time feel like it's um, it's familiar, uh, but it's familiar because it's making you feel something. Yeah, uh, like nostalgia plays a big part in, yeah. in, in it, I think. Yeah. There's a lot of nostalgia there. and But I think like the one that when I heard it the first time, uh, like blew my mind was uh, on the third act. I think that, I mean, for me, like I, I can't talk, I don't like talking about music technically because it doesn't mean anything, you know, like all that means anything is if you feel it you know like you can look at me and say the scene's not working and i can try and technically explain to you what i've done <laughs> but if it's if it's not hitting yeah there, then it doesn't matter you know angel like one of the main things was he really loves like 80s music you know and like we talked a lot about kind of synth wave and tangerine dream and um those kind of things and then you know more kind of modern stuff that leans on that like all the kind of vapor wave things and stuff like that so i think like having that as a jumping off point was really interesting but then as i got to know him deeper like you know we we're around the same age and so a lot of the things that you know when music really hits you when you're kind of a teenager and you feel very emotional about things i think a lot of those things were very similar for us i think that blue beetle sounds it's like it's it, it's electrifying and it's 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 exciting and it's it's big and it's bold but at the core of it is a is a big beating heart full full of emotion so you know a lot a lot of writing like i have a recording studio in my house so a lot of stuff will start with me either playing it on piano or you know i have a huge wall of synths and all that stuff so i'll i'll build a lot of things at home and then <clears throat> yeah and then it's a process of you know, there'll be things that I mock up orchestrally. So, you know, I'll, I'll write for a big ensemble of strings and brass and timpani and whatever else. But then it's also like, oh, hey, this like really strange percussive thing that I might have made by like, you know, banging a lot of things from the kitchen together or like, you know, some strange kind of like synth patch that I made that's doing drum patterns. Like, how can that be augmented with orchestra? And, you know, we did a day where we had these percussionists come in and they had, you know, these huge ski poles with like crazy things attached to them. They're smashing into the floor and, you know, dustbins and chains and hammers. And so uh, it's really just, I mean, it's a really 
exciting process of just finding what the what the core of the music is and then how do we extrapolate that and how do we experiment to make it bigger and broader and larger and more exciting. Animo is a wonderful word because it just means, I don't know, I mean, I, it's like, I don't even know how to translate it and that's why I think it's a great word. And it just means it, it has hope in it, it has optimism in it, but it also has strength. And through our movie, that word becomes really the identity of Blue Beetle. Stone is, is, is it has to be funny. I've never met a Mexican person that wasn't funny. Um, so there's no fucking way the movie wouldn't be funny. Um, but what kind of funny it is, is wonderful. And I think it's really inspired by the tone of the, of the early Blue Beetle comics, where you have a hero that's fallible. Being a DC Universe writer is something that the 11 year old me in Querétaro would have never believed. Uh, where I come from, <laughs> being a, uh, not a story but a filmmaker, working in Hollywood, with my, to my family, it's like, no mames, wait, you don't know anybody anywhere remotely related to movie making. Uh, the leap is so insane that, that even now I like, I, I, either I'm waiting for something really bad to happen, I'm just kidding, it's jinx, not, not jinxing anything, but I just, I have to pinch myself because I don't, I don't really, it doesn't dawn on me. Uh, earlier when, when you were mentioning, oh, this is such an uh, important thing, it's weird because when you're inside the, 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 the thing, you, you, you get caught up in it. But every now and then, when I first started talking to Angel, when he joined the project, I kept telling him, man, I, the, the, the 11 year old me would, would, like, he wouldn't believe it. I've been a, a really big DC comics fan for a long time. Um, and I'd gone through so many characters looking for something that felt fresh and new, something that felt a little different from a lot of the other superhero movies that I had seen. Um, and this one just stood out. You know, it stood out because of uh, Jaime Reyes and his character. It stood out because of his family. It stood out because of, you know, the fun, the humor, you know, the, and from some of the other DC, DC movies in particular. And I just felt like it was time. It was something that, that was exciting for, for the studio and something that was exciting for the superhero genre. Um, and just wanted to do something that felt a little different. This movie here is about a lot of things. It's about, a, it's about a young person trying to figure out who they are and how they fit into the world. You know, it's about a family trying to cope with things that every family copes with. And I think people will really connect to that, really understand and see themselves in that family. Visual style is something we talked about from a very, very early stage on this movie. It's, it, it felt like it, we had this sort of Palmera City, Miami, you know, synth wave, you know, vibe. It was driven by music. It was driven by color. It was, it was driven by, you know, this, you know, 80s nostalgia in terms of design, in terms of, you know, in terms of sound, in terms of, you know, light. And, and, and all of those things have, have, have created this, I think, as you said, very unique look and feel to the film. Um, I mean, the film's called Blue Beetle, you know, and it just, it just, it just, it just wants to be something that's, that's bright and fun. Um, and I think we've done a great job of accomplishing that. When we made Blue Beetle, and I think the secret to all the best movies, and especially superhero movies, is that there really is this like, I call it like a soft and fuzzy emotional core that you know, has to do with humor and heart and, and emotion and family and, and relationships and you know, conversation but it's wrapped in this like glossy, shiny shell of, of action and spectacle. And I think that's what this movie is, you know, at its heart, you know, the, the movie, the movie is, is about people. And, and I think, you know, when you walk away from a movie like that, you, you're gonna feel, you're gonna feel something, you know, you're not, you're gonna be hopefully blown away by the action, the spectacle, the fights, you know, the, the crazy gadgets, the, the crazy locations, you know, but you're also actually gonna feel for the characters and fall in love with them. When we set out to do the Blue Beetle suit, we had a lot of conversations, you know, because there's been a lot of versions sort of of the suit over, over the years in different comics and, and, and it's a huge challenge that every superhero movie faces to try to translate the vision of artists from the comic series into a live action suit. 
it was really important for us to make something that was real, something that was physical and something that was tangible, something that Sholo could put on, you know? And we spent a lot of time with Ironhead and with our costume designers uh, figuring that out. Um, and, you know, even to the point of like, the construction of the suit has, you know, six coats of paint, you know, in certain places, but at the end, that visceral, real, real nature of it, I think comes through in the movie really, really well. A theatrical movie is a movie where you want to stand up and cheer, where you want to laugh with people around you, where you want to ask the questions of why are those people laughing, but I'm not, you know? I think our movie delivers on all of those things in spades. Uh, it's fun, it's gonna make you, you know, kind of like tap your foot, it's gonna make you jump out of your chair, um, it's going to make you maybe even shed a tear. And that's what the enjoyment of all movies should be in a theater. And I think Blue Beetle, as I said, is, is, is the perfect movie to experience there. At some point, we were talking to the studio and they thought it would be great to make a slight change from the comics. And rather than setting Blue Beetle in El Paso, as it is in the comics, they thought it might make sense to give I mean, Blue Beetle, his own unique city, much like Superman has Metropolis, Flash has Central City. Um, we loved this idea. It suddenly got brighter. It suddenly got more colorful. It suddenly got the idea of water and how it, how it combines with this place, the idea of, of, of the different sides of a place like Miami in terms of the people that live there, the wealth that's there, other things. It just, it provided so many awesome opportunities to, to, to create a really unique environment in, in, in a superhero genre. Uh, and again, it starts to, it, it, it starts to inform the sounds, the music, the feeling, the lighting, all of these things. And, and I think it was an, was an amazing was an amazing choice. What this story is for me is it's a reluctant hero's journey. And Jaime Reyes is an ordinary kid uh, who finds himself in an extraordinary situation and doesn't want to be a superhero. So uh, he and his entire family, their first instinct is our our family member is in trouble, and we got to get this thing out of him because he now has a target on his back. And literally, it's a target on his back with the scarab. So I I think. When I think about what Blue Beetle is uh, as a story, uh, to me it is uh, what a regular kid, a regular first generation Mexican American kid from a working class family, what he would do if he actually had superhero abilities and didn't know why, or, and, but his first instinct is, I don't want this. What's great about the arc of our story is it's not like Peter Parker in Spider-Man. He doesn't all of a sudden just get this power and start swinging from buildings and having fun with it. He's trying to get it out and he doesn't want to have fun with it, but the suit itself is booting up and taking him on a ride. And so he is a reluctant hero throughout the majority of the story until it it's, becomes clear to him that this is his destiny, that he has to embrace it instead of trying to push away this thing that's being thrust on him. He has to embrace this power and use this power for good and that he has been the one that has chosen for a reason. And so therefore, he must step up and become the superhero he was destined to be and protect his community and his family. And to me, that's such a great story to, and a very uh, aspirational one for anyone. Uh, you know, uh, teens, 20-somethings, 30-somethings, for myself in my 40s, uh, for everybody, you can relate with somebody who's struggling with their, their identity and not sure who they should be, but then have this opportunity presented to them and have to make that choice to embrace it and become who you really are. And for Jaime Reyes, that is the superhero Blue Beetle. I also think the tone of our movie is what makes it so special and unique because it, because it has action, yes. Do we have superhero action? Absolutely. But we also have a lot of heart. This movie might make you cry, but it's also gonna make you laugh. And you're gonna have a good time. It's gonna be a fun ride. Uh, and you're gonna invest in this family. You're gonna invest in Jaime Reyes. You're gonna be with him on the journey. And it, at times it's fun, at times it's scary, and at times you're going to feel awesome because you feel like you're in, in that suit with him, and you're going to be that superhero with him as well, too. And I think that's what's so great about it. Jaime Reyes is just an average kid, and he gets to be a superhero. Even though he doesn't want it, he has to become it, and he, 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 
he makes that choice and he does become the superhero that Palmera said he desperately needs. There are so many facets about Angel that make him the per perfect director for this movie. And I guess I'll kind of just back up to what's great about the DC universe in general. Uh, what, what's great about DC is they allow their filmmakers to shine in their movies. Um, you know, Aquaman is a big spectacle James Wan movie, and you can see that uh, as soon as you sit in the theater and you watch that movie, you, you, you're immersed in that underwater world. And, and then there's the, like the, the James Gunn Suicide Squad, which is like a 70s caper film wrapped up in this fun comedy. Uh, it, it has its own look and vibe and texture to it. Uh, and uh, let's see, Aquaman, Sh Shazam. Uh, Shazam is its own fun world that uh, you know caters to a, a younger audience, uh, but also is its own tone. And I think you know what Angel is bringing to this is authenticity, number one, about the, the Latin culture and, and what it feels like to be in that world. Also, uh, you know, in, in our casting, he was very deliberate about making sure that they were authentic to those roles as well. Uh, and then he brings this other untangible piece to him that uh, as I've gotten to know him over, over uh, the last couple of years, he not only understands pop culture to a T, he's immersed in it, but he's also a tastemaker within it. And there's something about his, the, the look that he's gonna bring to this movie the the uh, Paul, the way that Palmera City is gonna look and feel, there's nothing like it. Well, growing up, I grew up on these movies, and uh, so the the 12 year old version of myself, every day I freak out when I come on set, and it's just a dream come true completely. Uh, but also for this film specifically, there's a lot of responsibility on this one, uh, and, and it's it's an important film, you know, not just to create entertainment, but also to break down some doors, knock down some walls for the Latinx culture and be able to put them up on a pedestal. So, you know, it's something that, uh, you know, I, I feel every day, but uh, I, I know this team is ready and uh, I'm excited to bring this this movie to the world and, and show people what it's like to be uh, immersed in a Mexican-American family.